Okay, so today I'm covering the Sicilian, Il Siciliano, the Sicilian, 1987, directed by Michael Cimino. Uh, Michael Cimino has just died, uh, so I thought I'd, I'd just take an opportunity to watch this film. I had been waiting to watch it for years and years and years. Well, the reason why I waited really is because up until really the past few months, there has not really been a good way to see the full director's cut of uh, the Sicilian in the United States. There have been European DVDs, uh, but very recently Shout Factory has released the full uh, two-hour, 26-minute director's cut, the full version of the Sicilian. And I was, I didn't know what to, what to expect, but, I, you know, I thought it was a great movie. I, I, the, 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 the masterpiece, the world masterpiece classic. I don't, I, you know, I, I don't know about that. I thought it was a really great movie. I thought it was really, really, really great. You know, I mean, this is this this film was made by a guy who who had already made a couple of a big, big, you know, kind of these big movies about big characters, the Deer Hunter and Heaven's Gate and all of this stuff. And unlike Heaven's Gate, where for me, I can't even understand half of what the actors are saying. Uh, I mean, I just, they're, they're going through these big philosophical, you know, Sam Waterston and, and, and Christopherson and, and Hurt at the very beginning of the film. They're going through all this. I can't understand it. They're blah, blah, blah. They, you know what they sound like? They sound like Peanuts. They sound like the teachers in Peanuts. You got, you'll, hear, you'll see like Hurt or Christopherson on the go. And they're like getting up and, and what I hear is... <laughs> Uh, the Sicilian is not like that. I understood every word that they were saying. I think the the the, th the reason why in Sicilian in the Sicilian is because it's a it's a dubbed movie. The thing is like 99% dubbed, so there's not you don't get the real you know kind of noise and 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 and, and everything of when you, when you have like location sound. It's all very clean and dynamic and really easy to hear and get the whole thing. Uh, but, you know, I loved it. I love The Sicilian. I don't get a lot of the, the online hate and the arguments, the, 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 the reviews. The Sicilian, uh, as I said, 1987, an adaption of Mario Puzo's novel, The Sicilian, which in itself was, was kind of an adaptation of the real-life events that went on in uh, around 1945, 1948 Sicily. Uh, the real-life bandit, Salvatore Giuliano, who is his real-life bandit in the mountains, uh, who came to prominence, in, you know, in post-World War II Sicily, where the Allied invasion had kind of left a vacuum of power in the country, where, you know, the peasants were starving, the, the uh, powerful, influential landowners were uh, being protected by the, the mob, and then you have the government and the church uh, of, of Italy kind of colluding with the, with the mob together to keep the, the, keep the proletariat down. And into that comes this, this bandit, this Salvatore Giuliano, who is accused of murdering policemen, uh, you know, who became this kind of folk hero that became, you know, and, and he lived a very short, turbulent life. Uh, and this this movie is is the dramatization of this. Uh, the the Puzo novel was kind of like a sequel to The Godfather, in that it was uh, kind of an offshoot of The Godfather, and that Michael Corleone, in his uh, when he was uh, you know banished to Italy, his years he gets involved with the real life Salvatore Giuliano, and they go on adventures and stuff. But for legal reasons, they couldn't use any of the, the Godfather characters, the Michael Corleone character in uh, uh, Cimino's film. So, it's it, again, it, it goes more back to the roots of the real-life Salvatore, Salvatore Giuliano. And, I mean, really, I mean, probably, uh, you know, uh, Christopher Lambert's Salvatore Giuliano in The Sicilian is, is probably very much like the William Wallace in Mel Gibson's Braveheart, in the sense that it's very much taking these real historical characters and then making a movie out of them and, and kind of playing around with the real history and everything, you know, because the, the Salvatore Giuliano in Chimino's The Sicilian is like this um, Robin Hood 
who steals from the rich and in some cases really literally stealing stealing the rich the jewels from the rich and then giving it to the poor giving the land uh, you know trying to buy land for the poor and give the poor their rights back and and all of this stuff so you know I, but what but he is even in the film he's kind of this gray character because he does murder people and then toward the end there is that corruption of power and the, the complications of of power and influence and he uh, the Christopher Lambert Salvatore Giuliano becomes kind of an instrument of political control of power of trying to to squelch the uh, the left-wing communist party and keep the right wing in control in Italy and he becomes kind of of this kind of power uh, play, which is assisted by this this mobster Don Mazzini, played by Joss Ackland, who kind of becomes like this kind of father figure, this kind of godfather to to Christopher Lambert's uh, Salvatore Giuliano. So it's the story. Um, so I mean, it's the Sicilian. They, it is the Sicilian Salvatore Giuliano, this bandit played by a uh, European superstar. Christopher Lambert, and it's basically his rise and fall, and everything that happens around him. That's what the the whole thing's about. I, I thought the film was very easy to to to, to get to understand. You know, I, I mean, Christopher Lambert is perfect in this in this role of Salvatore Giuliano as this kind of messianic figure. You know, very, you know, I mean, I. The, th the thing is, he, he doesn't really talk like a French, like an American. He talks like an alien, you know? I mean, he's just so used to enunciating his... his. It just comes out like, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger's cousin or something. It's just, it's, you know, he has this kind of stony, steel-eyed look, you know, slightly crossed eyes and just peering into your soul. He was perfect in The Highlander. And really, there are, there are scenes in this film where he's wearing his duster where it looks like he just walked off the Highlander set and he walked on here. Uh, early incredible role by John Turturro as Pisciotto, his friend, who, and their, their relationship like brothers you know, uh, as I said, Joss Ackland as this uh, Don Mazzino, this kind of mysterious gangster who has this relationship with with uh, with with Salvatore Lee Giuliano, where they barely even meet, but you know that he, he you know he feels that he is this son uh, figure. To, that, that that he could make this out of out of Salvatore Lee Giuliano. He could make a kind of his perfect son. You know, he has such a respect for this guy. You know, and and, it's, and that's just and that is a great part of the film. It's such a beautiful, uh, you know, relationship between these two characters that really barely ever meet. You know, they meet once at the very end, and it's just they embrace. It's like oh, okay, and this is something that there is this bond between these two characters that's so so great uh terrence stamp in a little tiny role as as uh, as prince borza this wealthy sicilian landholder and then also barbara sukawa the german actress who is in the fast bender movies like alexander berlinplatz and uh, lola and she went on to have a little career here as this uh, supposedly American duchess who is, you know, we see her, she is one of the first moments in, in the film where she slinks out of her riding clothes and naked into a bathtub, you know, and totally ignoring the, 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 the farmers, the people, the, the, her, the maids, the people that, you know, look after her and basically allow, facilitate her entire life, you know. And so the, the, the idle rich of, uh, of Sicily, the, the, the land barons, you know, those moments are, are a little bit kind of superfluous, you know, but they work, they work, they illustrate a point. And Barbie Sukawa's character, you know, she's not given really a lot to do, though she has a really beautiful moment with, with Don Mazzini and, uh, you know, uh, Mazzino rather. And, uh, you know, I mean, that, that whole, you know, dinner sequence where she, she throws water and dances, when, 
Ah, beautiful, beautiful moments. This is a film full of beautiful moments. For me, it's very easy to understand. I can I can understand someone, uh, an American audience, not being comfortable with this film because, I mean, it's shot in 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 Italy and it and it feels like um feels very much like an international European Hollywood production, in a sense that you've got you can almost feel like in the back they they got the roll call. Okay, we got Joss Acklin, we got Terrence Stamp, we got you know let's Aldo Ray. Let's just get the the. the Let's get some production, you know, value. Let's get the the top guys in each country and within our budget range to do this movie. Uh, and you you kind of you kind of feel that, you know. But it's again, it's it feels like an Italian film when it's dubbed and it's scope, it's widescreen Panavision, and it has that authenticity and feel that's that that occur in films like uh, the Heaven's Gate and everything. But it's a, I think it's a far more coherent film than Heaven's Gate. I mean, Heaven's Gate, you feel like it going for another two or three hours, and you're just like, oh, you know, and it's just go, and it's, you're confused. As I say, I was never really confused with this film. It feel, you know, I mean, if you understand about Italy and the graft and the corruption and the and the kind of not really uh, the, 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 the how church and state and the mob are all kind of colluding together, or at least that's the feel of those Italian crime films of the 70s. Something like The Sicilian just fits right into that, you know, and I mean Christopher Lambert as the, the as the, as the Salvatore Giuliano is just perfect, you know, perfect in the role, you know, and there are some really great action set pieces. I mean, there is a, there is a, uh, 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 there is a scene where the, the train, where they the hijack a train. There is all of these, you know, action. There's, you know, there's, some, you know, some violent assaults and action sequences. But it feels, it doesn't feel like it's. It's not like uh, Once Upon a Time in America, where it just seemed was like this swirling vortex of almost dreamlike stuff. No, this this is like a real action film. This is like A B C, and you're really getting it. You know. I I think the film maybe falters with some of these overindulgent moments with Barbara Sukawa and going to the other things, but it's all in, it's all giving you a perspective and it's all showing you uh, the world of Salvatore Giuliano, these world, these wealthy land barons and this impossible world for the peasants and then trying to do something for it and then realize then what you're doing may be hurting the peasants or they don't care or, you know, and so it's that, you know, the complex interactions of power and, and the building of character. I think the film is, is, is beautiful and perfect, and it, it made perfect sense to me. And it, it was just wonderful. But I could see how an American audience who's not used to Italian films, not used to Italian exploitation films, was like, why is this dubbed? What's going on? You know, would, would just kind of pass it by, you know. But beautiful performances. I mean, the guy, I believe his name is Bauer, who played Professor Adonis. Beautiful, beautiful thing. I mean, I, I, I mean, I don't think I've seen an Italian film which had as good a good, a, better performances in this film. I mean, Chimino, all Italians, the Italians, you know, or the native Italian filmmakers, you know, because I mean, it has a lot of American actors like Tuturo and then international actors like Lambert's because there's a lot of French money in it as well, you know, uh, distributed by Canal Blue and, 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 and everything. So it was, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a tragedy that what happened with this film, you know, uh, a after it was made, you know, Chimino didn't learn from Heaven's Gate. He was his, pulling the same crap with Heaven's Gate that he did, uh, you know, p pulling same crap, same crap. He was contractually obligated to do a two-hour movie. He brings it in at basically two, two hours and, and uh, 20, 25 minutes, 26 minutes, and uh, it, it gets into a big lawsuit with Fox, the domestic distributor of this film. They cut it down to 115 minutes, and that's the, the version that's really been shown on home video over the years. Though I think there was a, an expanded version on home video, right? I don't know, but it was pan and scan. It wasn't, it wasn't as good as the, as the new Shout Factory widescreen scope beautiful, beautiful looking Blu-ray, no real extras, 
Uh, the extra is just you getting the full international cut. I don't even know what you could really cut out of this film. Because it's, it really is a kind of a lean film. You know, it's a lean, lean movie. It doesn't, there doesn't really seem to be a lot of fat in it, as I said. The only fat that I could think when I was going through is just the barbecue, uh, Sukawa, the, 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 the Duchess, the American Duchess, that kind of subplot, which is meant to illustrate the kind of idle rich, the involvement of the Americans in, uh, in post-World War Italy, Sicily. Uh, it's, it's, it, and it gets into that, but again, I, I mean, I think you could do the character just with with Prince Borza in order to to focus in, on the idle rich. I don't I don't think it, 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 it adds a little bit of a sex, but that's about it. And there's not really a lot of sex. It's very it's, there's not really even a lot of nudity in this film. You can really cut it out. It's not it's not it's not Last Tango in Paris or by any means. Uh, you know, it's it's not uh, no no. So it's not even Il Conformista. It's not the conformist level of nudity either. It's 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 very, very uh, subtle and superfluous. And, but the action scenes, my God! I mean, the the the, the attack on Genestra and the May Day, the very end of the, the slaughter, the massacre, which is based on a real incident. Uh, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful uh, sequence. Beautiful sequence where you see that the conflicting nature of this character. Maybe he's gone too far, and there people are backstabbing him, using him for other means. Really beautiful film. So don't be afraid of Sicilian. It's a, it's a long film, but it's it's one of those movies that's like heat, or one of those movies where the, the length of the film is like, okay, you know, it's it's worth watching because you got the stuff on screen. It's not just a guy twiddling their thumbs for two hours. You know, like parts of Heaven's Gate kind of just are just like, can we, can we speed this up? I can't even look. He, I can't I mean, understand what this guy's talking about. Can we speed it up? Can we? I, can we? You know, no, I never felt that way during the Sicilian. Great, 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 great movie. Uh, I, I, I love it.